Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, welcome Claire, uh, our young writer judge. Uh, Claire was born in Romsey and before becoming a writer, she was a librarian and a, a nurse. And in then 2009, she graduated from Winchester University in creative writing and then followed that with a PhD in creative writing in 2018. And she's now an associate lecturer at the university. Her first novel, The Unexpected Return of Josephine Fox, which was actually based in Romsey, was the winner of the Richard and Judy Search for a Bestseller. But just as importantly as all that, she has been our young writer judge for the last three years. And this year, uh, whilst we would normally like three judges, uh, just for simplicity in, this, in the pandemic, we decided to ask just one judge and I'm glad to say Claire volunteered even before we knew how many entries we had. So now she's going to read some of the winning entries and hopefully she'll update us on our next novel. And then later on, we can talk to Jim Henderson, who's the head of Woodlands Community College. OK, well, um, it's a real pleasure to be invited um, to meet you all again after a year which has been so extraordinary in so many ways for everybody. Um, when I attended last year's dinner at your club shortly before the first lockdown, I hardly expected that would be um, the last social occasion I would be able to go to for a whole year. But it was. And uh, in defiance of Covid, here we are again, uh, meeting online, if not in the flesh. Um, I was honoured to be asked to uh, be a judge again. Um, we had 14 submissions this year. Um, in two age categories, which were 11 to 13 and 14 plus. Uh, three schools took part, Oasis in Schuling, uh, Hamble School and Woodlands Community College. The subject for the competition, My Happiest Day, meant that the majority of the students had been inspired, uh, entered non-fiction prose pieces. Um, but I was really pleased that some poems were also entered. Um, I carried out the judging as, uh, as uh, it's been said already um, on my own this year, but um, I did use um, very carefully the criteria that the Rotary Club organisers had set out and scored the work on imaginative approach, ability to engage the reader's interest and power of writing. What I intend to do is read each entry as I announce the winners. So the, the winning entries, I'll read those and tell you a little bit about why I felt these were the best entries in their groups. Um, in the 14 plus age category, only Hamble School actually submitted entries. And I judged 14 year old Chloe Smith's poem, Ruby Red Robin as the best of these. The poem had a sonnet like feel and good use was made of a simple but effective rhyming scheme. So I'll read uh, Chloe's poem for you. A red robin hopped into my life one day. It chirped and sang and flew away before the ruby sneak, sleep, sorry, before the ruby streak dawn. It pecked and wandered across my lawn. Oh, little red robin, what do you mean? Are you real or just a dream? You sang and danced so beautifully, glistening in sunlight a beautiful beam of joy and life in a world of dark. And you have made such a huge, huge mark, an everlasting image of joy and hope, a treasured flash of red, always shining in my head, my little ruby red robin. So in the 11 to 13 group, all three schools entered work and it was from this age group category that all the overall winners came. Keeping with tradition, I'm going to start with a third prize overall, uh, which goes to Jasmine Blampied, aged 13 from Oasis School, Scholing. Her account of a day at the Olympic Stadium was full of excited anticipation and wonder. The first thing I heard that day was the loud piercing sound of the alarm ringing in my ears. The anticipation of the day ahead filled me with excitement. I couldn't believe I was heading for the Olympic Stadium. I frantically sprang out of bed and soon after the journey to our destination began. 
After the short train ride, I could see the looming silhouette of the stadium where the 2012 Olympics were held and where Great Britain celebrated that Super Saturday. My heart was beating out of my chest and my legs felt like jelly as I fought my way through the busy crowds and rushed to find my teammates. The reason we were there was because Annika, Imogen, Amelia and myself had run a top 10 UK time for the under 13 four by 100 meter relay. Before I knew it, I was stepping onto the training track with my relay team, where many world-class athletes had previously been. Just before our team got called to race, Katharina Johnson-Thompson wished all of us good luck. I had to pinch myself, that actually had happened. Oh my God, I was now at the Muller Games. As the last calls were made, the atmosphere became intoxicating as the teams prepared to race. All of us girls tightly hugged each other, wished each other good luck and prepared to stride out to our individual positions on the track. As I nervously walked through the tunnel, the screams and cheers echoed through the stadium and camera flashes were everywhere. I was called by the race organiser. I could feel butterflies fluttering around in my stomach as I was assigned to my lane. My mind churned with all kinds of thoughts. I wonder if who had run on this lane before and if they'd felt as nervous as I did. To my surprise, just as I grasped the baton tightly in my hand, a camera was positioned in front of me and I was told to wave. Finally, it was time to race. Silence saturated the atmosphere in the stadium as the loud words, on your marks, broke the stillness. My whole body quivered with excitement as the race was only seconds away. Soon after, the sound of the gun pierced the air. I glided across the track like a gazelle. My ears were muted to the noises around me. As I approached Annika, I released the sweaty button into her palm and off she went into the distance. Anticipation was all around as the final runners, including my teammate Amelia, sprinted across the finishing line. We all smiled and ran to each other to celebrate competing together as not only a team, but a good, as good friends. Finally, the day was finished with a meal from my favorite restaurant, Nando's. That was the happiest day of my life, July 21st, 2019. I decided two entries deserved equal status as second prize winners overall. One of these was a piece entitled The Love of Dance, written by Alia Harfield, age 12, from Woodlands School. This piece is a brief, focused and evocative prose poem with a powerful message about acceptance. The Love of Dance. <clears throat> Dancing makes me happy. It makes me happy because I can express how I feel through the love of dance and music. Music is so powerful. It allows me to visualize and express emotions. I can transform. Dancing is my happy place. It makes me feel good and it gives me confidence to be who I am. My dance family are friends who share my passion and the studio unites us together. Equality, diversity, no judgment just acceptance. Our unbreakable bond was formed at the studio. The studio is our happy place and that's where I've had many of my happiest days. The other joint place, second place, went to Alex Rose of Woodlands School. I think I've made an error actually. Um, which school he came from, I will check in a moment, sorry. Um, Alex is 12. This is a thoughtful and heartwarming account of Alex's first meeting with dad. My happiest day was the day I met my dad. For most, that would be the day they were born. And no, I can't remember that. The day I met my dad was a little different. It was July 20th, 2014. A luxurious day with skies as blue as his eyes. We all met at a park, one of my favorites in fact with woods and the beach, waves swimming back and forth, glowing like crystals, leaves dancing in the wind. We had arrived. My emotions were scattered, 
heart pounding, barely being able to hand, haul in my excitement like a jar with no lid. On the other hand, I was nervous. I had so many questions about him, body burning, attempting to hide my wave, wave of emotion, just like the sparkling waves, nervous, excited, nervous, excited. Hello, he had arrived. As soon as I saw him, I knew he was caring and respectful. Holding in my nerves, I introduced myself because first impressions are important, you know. Hi, I'm Alex. At this point, my nerves couldn't be held in, so I sounded very shaky. He introduced himself as Ian. Speaking of first impressions, my mind was scanning short brown hair, cozy gray jumper with sparkling jewelry. My brothers and I, on the other hand, just ready to play. My dad could clearly see that, so we rushed to the park. All of us played on the swings and ran with my dog. This might seem quite normal, a quick play in the park and then go home. But to young me, it was so much more than special than that. It was like we were in spaceships with superhero luck, heart no longer pounding, but wait, apart from when I was on the huge roundabout with Commander Louis in, on board. Whoa! So that's why the day I met my dad was the happiest day of my life. Fast forward to now. He is my dad. My dad got married to my mum and we do everything together. It's perfect. Yes, I'm sorry, I've got one of these schools wrong. I am absolutely certain, though, that the overall winner of, to, of the year's competition was Megan Channel, age 13, who is from Woodlands. S Megan's piece begins in the middle of what might seem to be a disaster, as she and her family are caught in a hurricane. The effect, writing is effective with vivid, sensual details that engage the reader's interest and the imaginative way in which Megan has structured her piece makes the most of its life-affirming conclusion. My heart was pounding. It felt like it was gonna burst out of my chest. I could feel my sister's heavy breathing on the back of my neck, my mum shaking against my legs and my dad's arms wrapped, tightly wrapped around us. I couldn't believe that only two days ago we were riding roller coasters and having the best times of our lives exploring the magical world of Disney. We were all huddled together underneath the table in our hotel room. I kept thinking, I want to go home. Why now? Will I ever see my grandparents and friends again? Where will my dog go? Who will look after her if I don't come home? Will I still be in the arms of my family when all this is over? Suddenly, I could hear strong winds, winds like I'd never heard before. The windows were shaking, the door was thumping, and I could hear the cracking of tree trunks as they fell to the ground. My sister screamed and grabbed my hand as a chair hit our hotel window, causing it to shatter. My hair was in my face, and I couldn't see anything. It was extremely cold as the wind was now inside our room. I tried to see what was going on, but my mum covered my eyes and pushed my head tightly into her chest, away from the wind, because she didn't want me to see. I felt my feet getting wet. The room was filling up with cold, murky water from the lake which ran around our hotel. I started to panic that this was the end. But as the water reached my, oh, as the water was riding, rising fast, I beg your pardon. I started to panic as the water was rising fast. I was not a good swimmer, neither was my sister. I was worried that this was the end, but as the water reached my chest, it stopped. The wind started to die down and suddenly it was silent. As we crawled out from under the table, I could see all the damage caused. My suitcase of clothes, my sketch pad and my souvenirs that I'd collected from the Disney parks were all soggy and dirty. They were ruined. At that moment, I had a big sigh of relief. My clothes, sketch pad and souvenirs can all be replaced, but my family can't. Although my family looked terrified and shaken, they were alive and we were together. Some may say that this would be the worst day of my life. For me, 
to not only survive the hurricane, but to survive it and still be in the arms of my family was the happiest day of my life. As always, I really enjoyed reading all the entries and was impressed by the hard work the students had put into their writing and the honesty and simplicity with which they told their stories. James has kindly said I could have just a few moments to tell you how my writing's been going this year. In spring 2020, in the middle of the first lockdown, I was fortunate enough to be commissioned by my publisher to produce another two novels in my historical crime fiction series set in the local area in World War II. While I'd much rather have been out and about and continuing my face-to-face -face teaching at Winchester University, in reality, lockdown meant I could concentrate on getting the first of these to my publisher, which I did just before Christmas last year. I'm really happy to be able to tell you that it's been accepted and uh, treachery at Hursley Park House involving the real life relocation of Spitfire um, to Hursley um, after Supermarine was bombed out of uh, Southampton is due to be published in October this year. Thank you. That's it. I'm sorry I uh, messed up on the, the, the names of the schools. I will sort that out. I'm sure okay. I did. It was yeah. uh, from Hamble School is Alex Rose. Alex Rose was from Hamble. Thank yeah. you. Yes, I knew I knew Alia and uh, Megan were from Woodlands, and I couldn't. I I put down Woodlands by mistake for Alex, but thank you. Yes, Hamble School. Uh, are you are you happy to take questions? Of course, I am. Yes. I I was wondering how, how you how, how you came to a conclusion. Do you sort of give? Do you mark each one out on on different topics, or or, or is it, or how much does it feel, and how much is it sort of? Uh, you know, well, like marks for things it's all of those things really i had um the the uh, rotary club organizers had said what things that the judges would be looking for which were imagination power of writing and um what was the other thing um uh, uh, let me see i've got it on my first thing uh, uh ability to engage the reader's interest and of course that one uh, works you know regardless so what I tended to do was uh, read each each piece that was sent in um, read it without any kind of preconceptions about what I was expecting and I would be thinking about those three categories whether they drew me in whether the piece drew me in all the pieces that I read to you made me stop and want to read them um, and made me feel like I was part of the story that they were they were giving me. Um, and then, uh, you know, how much imagination they'd used, how many, the imagery that they'd used, things like, um, shall we say, for example, um, the one who had, uh, the, the girl who, who wrote about the, um, going to the Olympic Stadium, Jazz, um, Jasmine, with her, uh, an imagery like silence saturated the atmosphere. That's a really stunning image. And I picked up on that and, uh, you know, felt that that was, that wasn't the only reason that she got a place, but it was part of the way that she was writing that gave a place to her. Um, the, the winner, um, I thought the winner had taken a really sophisticated uh, way of looking at her story. I had lots and lots of really lovely pieces about happy days. It was it was a super competition to have this time um, because uh, you could, you know, in the midst of all the sort of gloom and doom, it was lovely to read about their happy days. But some of them were sort of outstanding. And Megan's was sophisticated in the way that she had approached it and the way she had produced it in that she hadn't set out to you know she, she'd set out thinking about what made a day happy um the, the fact that she'd been through this terrible experience but they'd all come through it well um was good and she didn't start with you know it might have been the worst day in my life but and then tell you she told you in a way that grabbed your interest that wanted you made you want to read on to get to the conclusion which are all sort of writers uh, techniques to get you there so 
yes, I have a, a kind of, you know, I have an internal um, thing that's going on in my head when I'm reading them. And I've also got a little score sheet that says, you know, did this one do that? Did it, did it engage my interest? Did I think they'd used imagination to, to do what they were doing? Um, you know, had they written powerfully? And it's not always the most correct writing that is most powerful. And in, in these stories, there are little glitches in their grammar or their expressions, but they come across as really powerfully written pieces of work. Mm. Mm. In, you know, obviously in the past, we've had more than one judge and it's actually quite interesting that I don't think in the, in the three years I've done it, last year we had three of us doing it, the year before there were just two of us. The year there were two of us, when we did it with two, um, it was a little bit trickier because obviously two, you know, you, you can have one says one thing and one says the other and there's no sort of mediation between it. But we've never had a, a, a kind of, I've never had a, a time when I've said this one is the best and the other judges have said this is the worst. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, there is a, Although there's obviously, um, you know, something of personal taste in it, something of, you know, what we judge as a piece of good writing, there are some basic fundamentals that mean pretty much, you know, if it's a good piece of writing, we'll all think it's a good piece of writing. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a mm. poor piece of writing, we'll all think it's a poor piece of writing. So, um, you know, I think we've, I, I didn't feel too worried about not having anyone to, um, run it, run with these, and sort of say, what do you think? Um, obviously, I read them several times. I thought about them. I usually print them out and put them out on paper, and then sort of shuffle them around and see which I. I think mm -hmm. I think Megan's was my winner from the beginning. Probably, yeah. you know, the first run through it, I thought yeah. she was the winner. The, the 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 places I kind of played a little bit with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, any, Sean, any, 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 Sean? Yeah, yeah, two questions for Claire. Mm -hmm. the first one uh, might just be me, but I think these writings are sort of wasted. Can you send me copies so I can put them in the magazine each month? I can just send a little write up. Copy. Yeah, um, I mean, Chris has got them all, haven't you, Chris? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can send them, Sean. Any? As long as we get your Chris was to one, yeah, yeah, Chris was the one who sent it to me. I mean, I'm happy to send it to you, Sean. I haven't got your email, but if Chris is happy to do it, I, I mean, or I'll do it as well. No, I'll um, Chris twist. Whichever. I'll, Would twist, it be? I'll, get, I'll twist his arm to let me have them. The second question is, okay, can, you do yeah, me a write -up on, can you do me a write-up on your new book to go in there? I can, yeah, surely. I'd be happy to. I could read. I could read you a little bit of it if you like, but um, I thought that might be pushing it a bit far. Oh, God, yes, I, I, I'd, I'd love that. How, how do, and many else happy with that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Give us five minutes on your new book, Claire. Go on. Oh well, it, it won't be five minutes. Just a minute or two. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, this is the um, opening of the new book, and it's set in December nineteen forty-two. And as I said, I've already said it's it's um, it's obviously it's fictional that the what happens is fictional, but the setting is Hursley Park House up at um, well up in Hursley, where Supermarine was relocated uh, after the bombing in Southampton. It's past midnight, but the party is still in full swing behind the black windows of the big house. Music swells into the garden each time a door is opened. Singles emerging to take the air, closely twined couples strolling arm in arm, oblivious to cold and observation. The drift of cigarette smoke and the mutter of voices and laughter leeches into the night. The two lads who are keeping watch patrol their beat as faithfully as guardsmen outside Buckingham Palace, though they've nothing between themselves and trouble but their own native wits and a stout stick apiece. For one, his route takes in the tennis court and the walled garden, the tool sheds and greenhouses, the fruit stores and summer house. For the other, the coach house and stables, the well house and sunken garden, the path beyond to the water tank. On the hour and the half hour, they meet at the sundial and exchange all's wells, 
tepid tea from a flask, a dog end cigarette. At 12.30 a.m., only one arrives at the rendezvous. He waits a lonely five minutes, thinking jealously of the couple he's watched necking in the summer house and wished for his own bed and his girl waiting ready in it. Then he looks at his watch and sets off to find his delinquent friend. A chill breeze blows across the bowling green, makes the searching lad shiver and pull his scarf more closely round his neck. In the moonlight, the grass is blue-grey, the shadows sharp honed. He calls his friend's name. David mutters a curse when an owl skims like a pale ghost over the lawn, answering his call with an interrogatory, who? The shadows are deep beneath the pergola, inky black, deceptive. In the sunken garden, a shimmer of water moves under the moonlight. Down he goes, negotiating a dozen treacherous steps. At the water's edge, alien tessellations of black and white shift, a late lily flower, a skein of weed. David, a hand and a hank of hair. David, he calls for the third time, but nobody answers. There you go. That's the, the very opening pages of the new novel. Thanks very much, Claire. That, that, was, that was lovely. Uh, Chris, do you want to just uh, uh, introduce Jim? Uh, yes, um, I'd just like to ask Claire, does it involve Josephine Fox? The, uh, it does, movie? yes. The, yeah. the same characters will be in it. Okay. Josephine and Bram Nash, the coroner of, at Romsey, yeah, they will be in it. Be yes, so sorry, I'm, I'm getting told here that, that Rosemary <laughs> wants to give the vote of thanks to Claire and then we'll go to Jim. Sorry about that. Could I just quickly, could I just quickly say to Sean, I will write you something. Shall I send it to you directly or shall I send it to Chris? Well, I'm going to send you the video to check. So, yes. Okay, you I'll have your email me. then. I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. No, I, I just wanted to say thank you very much for judging for, for the third time, uh, especially when you had to do it on your own. And very uh, well. it's been a very difficult year for the students who have not been into school very often, and, and also mm. for, for Chris trying to do the youth competitions. So, it's great that that actually got finished and, and listening to the winners, they're almost looking inside themselves, aren't they, to, yeah. to do the writing for you. So it, it's always a treat to hear what they've written because, I mean, as a, a girl, I always would fare very badly on composition. So to hear really good work like that is brilliant. So, like you say, it was a year we last, you know, since we last saw you. And in the meantime, you've managed to do another book. So you now publish author of two books, which is fantastic. And I'm sure that the students, when they know uh, just how well you've done and that they've got a published author as their judge, they must be very impressed indeed. So thank you very much. And we'll thank you in the usual way.